welcome back, welcome to a brand new video series. In this series, we will talk about Excel, about formulas, about charts, about problems you may have, and a lot more. In this video, we have a little problem. Let's take a look. So this is what we have. We have the table to the left with the top 20 cities by population, sorted from largest to smallest. And by the way, you can find a link to the source data down in the video description. We have that ranges right here, so top 3 until top 20, which is basically the input for our drop down list right there. So here we can select the different ranges. This is fine. The only problem that we have is that we need a formula which retrieves the sum of the population of the selected value in the drop down list. So if we select top 5 here, we want to have a formula which retrieves the sum of those five oops of those five cells right here. This is what we have to do right now. And to do this, two options would be to either use an if formula or a choose formula. Now let's take a look at the if formula first. To do this, we simply type if into that cell for instance and write if this drop down list so the selected value in that drop down list is equal to top 3, so that part in the ranges right here. So if this is true, then calculate the sum of the first three cells, like this. This is fine. But if that's not true, if it's false, then we need a second if. And the second if simply tells us that if, again, the drop down list is equal to top 5 right here, then we should calculate the sum of the first five cities. Okay, but if that's not true again, so if we close the bracket, then we need the third if, and you can see where this is going right now. So we need the third if, if the drop down list is equal to top 10, then we need to calculate the sum of the first 10 cells right here, close the bracket, and finally, if our drop down list is equal to the top 20, well, then we need the sum for the top 20 cities right here like this. Well, and if that's also not true, then we simply want to return an A. Press enter twice, like this. So this is working, right? If we select the top 3, it works, top 5 works, top 10 works, and the top 20 work. Really nice, but not really good, right? Because this if formula right here wasn't really nice to create, and also it doesn't look nice. So we should think about a second option, how we could calculate that. To do this, we need two things. We need a choose formula, which we will create, and we need the developer tools. You can find them up here, and I already selected it. If you don't have that developer tools ribbon, just take a look at the video description where you can find the link, which explains to you how you can activate that developer tools. However, we have the developer tools right here, so what we have to do first is we have to go to insert right there, click onto it, and now select the second form control, this one right here. If we click that, and now place it for instance right here, like this, and now change the size maybe like this, well, then we have a second drop down list, right? Doesn't help us a lot because if we click here, well, we can't do a lot. What we can do is we can right click it and now select format control down there like this. And now we are in the control menu and here we have to define two things. First we have to define the input range. Well we have an input range right, our range is right there. So if we click here and select those input ranges right there, click right here again, then we got the first thing, so the input range defined. And now we have to define a cell link. Well, we don't know at the moment what it is, but we will learn that in a few seconds. So the thing we do right now is we click right here and select the cell between those two drop down lists, like this. Press right here and press OK. Now, again, if we unselect our drop down list, we can now select the different ranges top three top 5, and so on. But nothing changed, right? Huh, you probably saw it. We now see that number right here. So if I select top 3, so the first value in our range, then we have a 1. 
If I press top 5, it's 2. If I press top 10, it's 3. And for the top 20, well, it's 4. So this means we now have a cell which changes dynamically depending on the selection in our drop-down list. And now the choose formula comes into play. Let's first write the choose formula and take a look at the syntax to understand why this might be important right now. So I'm writing choose now, like this, choose, and press tab. And now that you can see that we have to define an index and values. Well, and if we now select our index right here into that cell that changes depending on the selected range in our drop-down list that we just created, then we have that index defined. And what choose then does is that if that index is equal to 1, it will do whatever we tell choose to do for value 1. If that changing cell right here is equal to 2, then choose will do whatever we define in value 2, and so on. So the only thing we have to do right now is we have to tell choose that in case of f10 is equal to 1, so for value 1, this should be the sum of the first three cities. For value 2, it should be the sum of the top 5. For value 3 of the top 10, and for value 4 of the top 20. And an even greater thing is that if we write sum in front of that choose formula, like this, and now go back to the value 1, we can simply select the top 3, like this, then write the comma, so this is what's going to happen now if this cell is equal to 2, so to the top 5 in our range. Then we select the top 5, value 3, so top 10 should be equal to that, and value 4 should be equal to the top 20, like this. If we now close the brackets and press enter, then we see that we got the same result that we had when we used the if function. Now, if we, for instance, right-click right here and now position it right there so that we cannot see that number, we can see that we are now able to choose the top three and can do the same thing with the if, the top five, and the top ten, of course, also. And it returns the same value, but only using this smaller and easy to understand function. So whenever you have a problem like that, don't only think about the if formula. Also keep in mind that choose might be a better way to solve problems like this. I hope you learned something in that video that might help you when you're facing problems like that. And I can only say thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.